점수 잡는 hackers. So introduction to the section itself, right? So the time that you will be given for uh, solving the problems on the writing language section is exactly 35 minutes so a very short test it is right uh, compared to the other sections math and reading right and then also there will be 44 uh, problems in total so this amounts to actually 48 seconds per question which sounds really really short if you think about it but a lot of the questions you can actually memorize grammatical concepts and get them out of the way pretty quickly like maybe even within like 10 seconds so uh, you don't have to worry about that time management is actually not a problem for most people who are taking the writing language section test it really isn't uh, maybe on reading section it will be but on writing language section most people don't struggle with this after like two weeks of studying it okay so 64 ratio what this means is that you'll have 60 percent grammar questions on this section and uh, the rest 40 percent will be reading questions so the reading questions will sound a lot like the evidence-based reading that you'll be tested on on the SAT, right? The reading section, so critical thinking, critical reading, context, uh, coherence, things like that, right? Um, so yeah, and then the grammar questions, uh, we'll go through that really thoroughly in just a little bit, but grammar questions are pretty easy as long as you memorize the grammar concepts and the types of problems that will be tested underneath uh, the grammar category, okay? So let's look at this, okay? Number of passages that you'll be getting on the test itself is a total of four passages, so not that much, okay? And words per passage that you will be getting is 400 to 450 words, so the passages aren't very long, uh, especially compared to um, reading section, right? It's pretty short. Okay, question type is all multiple choice, thank God, because you do not want to write uh, essay version of your answers on the writing language section, right? Um, so this is really our benefit, right? To our benefit. So you get four options, A, B, C, D, and you'll be choosing from those. And there are no two answer, uh, two correct answers or anything like that. It's just one correct answer out of the four, okay? And the passages, I want to just dive into this a little bit before we move on. You know, every test will general, uh, generally feature an argument passage, an inform informative passage or explanatory text, and a nonfiction narrative, okay? And every SAT writing language section has also one or more passages that contain graphics, such as a graph, chart, or table, data. You'll be really surprised how many students on the actual test will neglect the graph or the data that they're given because they didn't see it and they just solve the problem thinking it's a context problem, but it's actually a graph problem. So you have to look at the graph and then based on the graph, based on the evidence given there or the chart, whatever you're given, right, the picture uh, on the test, then you can solve the problem, okay? So don't forget that there are graph or chart or table questions, usually two per test, okay? Here is a general breakdown of the passage contents on the test. Number one, career passages. So career passages, you'll be explained or introduced to a new career and you know the responsibilities or the benefits or the drawbacks of that specific career that the passage is describing. And history and social studies passages, you know what those are usually about. You know, history would be usually U.S. history and things that American students will typically be familiar with because they learned it in high school, um, such as maybe abolition, uh, and then other topics like independence of America and, you know, things like that. Uh, very common, right, social studies passages. And the humanities passages, psychology would fall under this, typically. So um, you'll get a passage about Sigmund Freud, right, and psychoanalysis and things like that. And those probably would be helpful if you had some background knowledge from high school, but once again, SAT doesn't necessarily require background knowledge on 
all the topics because you can't tell what kind of topic you're going to get. You know, you, you, you don't know if you're going to get a career passage. Um, even if you do get a career passage, it might be a career that you never even heard of or didn't have any background knowledge on, but you can still solve the problem. So there's no worry about that. But yes, if you do have a lot of time to invest, go ahead and familiarize yourself with U.S. history passages or humanities passages by looking at news articles or magazine articles online or offline, okay? Science passages, science passages might introduce you to a new development of technology or a part of biology, things like that. Uh, very diverse in the category of science, but yeah, typically this is what the writing and language section passages will be talking about, okay? And then problem categories, this is really important. So you have four problem categories in total, okay? So if you're new to the writing language section, just remember that there are only four problem categories in total. These are big categories, okay? So let's look at them together, good, okay? Number one, grammar, okay? Number two, vocabulary, three, context, and number four, graph. Okay, what did I say? Grammar, vocabulary, context, and graph. So, number one, underneath the grammar category, you'll have 25 problems out of how many? Do you, do, you, do you guys remember? How many questions do you get on the writing and language test? Okay, I hope you didn't forget already. 44 questions, right? So, out of 44, 25 of your problems will be grammar questions. So, that is a huge, like, significant part of your test, um, which is good, actually, because, you know, this being 60% of your test is actually the easy part of the test. Uh, a lot of people have this like notion about grammar like oh I'm not good at grammar you know I'm I'm not a grammar Nazi like I, I don't know what's right or what's wrong I just do things by feel you know but actually this is the easiest part once you get to actually know it because it's pretty limited and the number two vocabulary vocabulary is something that you do have to memorize uh, sorry to tell you guys this but um, yeah you have to memorize vocabulary that is tested on the writing and language section but Typically, there are, you know, common set of SAT vocabulary words that you can easily find and uh, those will be reused on the test a lot. So, memorize at least the most common ones that are, appear on the test. Um, and then context. Context will be 15 problems, which is uh, kind of a big part of the 44 question test, right? So, context is something that you read and so this is basically like critical reading. Okay, it's testing you on your level of whether you can determine whether this is a passage of coherence or not. So what is coherence? Uh, coherence is uh, not distracting, right? Coherence is what? Going with the same theme or flow throughout the passage, right? Not talking about A, B, C, and D, you know, all these things all put together, you just hodgepodge, not like that, but one theme, one purpose, one main goal, and you're staying focused on that goal throughout the passage. So that's talking about coherence, so whether you can determine uh, if this sentence belongs here or not, or uh, can you order the sentences in the proper order, uh, can you add or delete sentences that should be added or deleted, things like that would be under context category, all of them, okay? So this is the category that most students struggle with because yes, you do have to have some critical thinking and yes, it is required of you to read the whole paragraph in order to solve this question, this type of question correctly. Okay, graph, you'll have two problems, like I said before, so data, charts, graphs, um, anything like that would fall under the graph category. Make sure you look at the graph, okay? It's, it might not be a context problem. Make sure uh, you read the question carefully and see if it refers to a graph, okay? So a total of 44 questions like that, right?